Hey guys, so hopefully you remember my friend Brooke. I brought her back today because her baby Lincoln is like eight, eight months, seven, seven, seven and a half months old yeah. and he's eating baby food. <laughs> yeah. He likes it. So we thought it would be a super fun topic to do baby food and we're gonna break the um, topic into two episodes. So today we'll do some general tips and some of our favorite gear and then the next time next week we'll do a couple of our favorite recipes. I'm Meg and I'm passionate about finding easy, healthy, delicious recipes for kids. So let's start by talking about why make your own baby food. Because I think Brooke, when we first talked, you were buying like pouches like these, right? Yeah, I was buying the organic pouches, which are fine, but I realized they're really expensive, like between $1.50 and $2 each. And actually I noticed the back that they were good for almost two years, and I thought there's gotta be a lot of there's preservatives else in there, in there right? for yeah. them to be good for that long, even though they're all organic. The other thing is there was a lot of waste. You know, we would open them and they're only good for two days, and a lot of times I'd end up throwing half the package yeah. away full. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to Meg and <laughs> see if she has a solution so for me. So she started me. coming over, and I just gave her a few recipes, and we trialed it out. Um, so what you're gonna need if you want to make your own, you could buy a and one of those expensive machines, which is what I did in the beginning. I kind of got duped into that. But really, you don't need it. What you need is a way to cook the food and make it soft. So the most kind of convenient way is to steam it. Yep. You can get a steamer basket like this, put it in a pot, steam it, make it soft. And then pureeing is the second step, and you can do that with a traditional blender, you can do it with a food processor, or you can get something like the Baby Bowl, which I think is what you have, right? Yeah, I bought that one because it was one of the lesser expensive ones, so I felt like if it didn't work out or I didn't have the time, you know, I didn't put a huge investment in it, and I ended up really liking it. We use it every day almost, and it came with a bunch of nice additions for storage right, and so feeding. Right, it's kind of like a package deal, mm -hmm. which is perfect. So next, let's talk about storage. We've made our baby food, now where the heck do we put it, right? <laughs> so the easiest thing to do is just to use an ice cube tray. You freeze it in the ice cube tray, and those are about one ounce portions. Mm -hmm. Those are a little bit small. Yeah, it's a little so small. The portion is small. So I actually prefer these, they're just silicon ice cube trays, and the portions are a little bit bigger, and they're super easy to just pop the food right out, which makes it cool. No matter what you're using these, the regular ice cube trays, what you do is you freeze it. Once they're frozen, you pop them all out, you get yourself a Ziploc bag and you label it, super important. So you know, peach puree and then the date that you made it because you know it's a it's good for about three months in the freezer, preferably okay. one month, but three months you know you're gonna start to get ice crystals, but that's how you store it. Um, you can also use one of my favorite things. Well, first, the, the baby bullet, you said it come, comes yes, in Yes, it stuff, comes right? with a nice kit, yeah. A freezer kit and a refrigerator kit. That's perfect. But if you don't have the baby bullet, you can also get these OXO containers, which I love. So these are about two ounce portions. It comes with the tray that you can put it in, so it's not tipping over in your freezer. And then these you can take and put in the fridge to thaw, or you can actually heat them in the microwave, which is super cool. And the best part is that you can just, you know, grab one of these to go. You don't have to No, do you put the out. date on those? You can, you can okay. write in like a, you know, in a dry erase marker or something like that, um, but, but you're probably going to use them because it's small. Yeah, I try to stay organized. Yeah. Sometimes you get something yeah, like that in the back of the freezer. <laughs> you can also use these containers, which are just ball freezer jars, and they're big, which isn't great, but you can use them later for like a kid's snack container, like put some Cheerios or something in that later, so they're reusable. Well, sometimes we actually add some oatmeal and some milk with which his perfect. food, but yeah, I was actually thinking that'd be a really good size for that, there especially for Oh, I love it. Um, and then the other thing you were going to talk about is the breast milk bag, right? Because I didn't know about this. So, I, yeah, these? I love this. I used these when I was pumping, and when I first, the first time I made food, I didn't have one of these ice trays, so I put some of the food in it. So it was a nice small bag. I like that they have a really good seal, and you can just they're disposable, so you just write, you know, the date and what's in there. And throw them away when That's you're done. Like brilliant, because eventually yeah, you'll, have ex, for us. you'll have extra breast milk bags yeah. probably. So they're perfect, perfect use. Okay, so next step, you know, you made your baby food, you stored it. Now, how do you feed your kids? So the first thing you want to investigate is a spoon. For little kids, you'll definitely want a plastic tip as opposed to a metal tip, which is great when the kids are little. So I have these from BAB, and then you have a favorite spoon that you brought, right? Yeah, this is the OXO brand, like your storage okay. containers. And it was funny, I asked my husband and all Lincoln's babysitters, and everyone said that they liked this spoon the best. <laughs> And I think it's because it has a nice deep well, so it kind of gets the perfect right. amount of food, and it also can act as a spatula. 
so you can really get every last bit out of the bowl and it's great for cleaning off the sides yes. of their yeah. mouth. Perfect. And then in terms of bowls, I like ones that have a suction cup on them. That's because, awesome. You yeah. know, once the kid is really happy that they're eating, you know, they can kind of knock those bowls over and it makes a huge mess. It's funny, Lincoln just in this last week noticed the bowl and his goal in life <laughs> is if I turn my head for a second to try to reach the bowl. So Thank we're you. gonna be buying one of these <laughs> today. And then, and then you bought your favorite bibs, right? Yeah, I love this bib. It's by Summer and it's nice because it's just rubber so it's really easy to clean and it's got a great well. So when anything falls out of their mouth, which it's it does a lot. lot. <laughs> yeah, it's not in their lap. And I like the way it attaches, I like the size. We tried a few of these rubber bibs and this was definitely our favorite. And then you brought this one, which is slightly less expensive, right? Yeah, I like this one. It's a little less expensive. It comes in a six pack. We got it at Baby's so R Us, I think. Different diaper bags. Yeah, we keep over. them everywhere. It's a little bit cuter. It's a more traditional bib, but the best thing about this one is that it has plastic on the back, so if you do get a bad spill, it doesn't right seep through. all the way through to Perfect. their clothes. And then this is the one that I used for Brooks. Didn't have for Avery, but it, it, it wraps all the way around his neck so that you know it's not going down his back. Yeah. And the kid can get food everywhere, so this one is perfect. For yeah, him. I'm amazed. I never <laughs> thought they could get it on the back of their neck, but they can. <laughs> so the last thing we want to touch upon are just these, you know, feeders. I guess they're called, right? Yeah. And so I use them, especially with Brooks, to introduce him to different textures of foods. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd put a banana in them and he could kind of gnaw on it and be introduced to that. But there's like a whole new movement, right? Yeah, it was funny. A lot of my friends um, with babies were talking about this weaning. And so a lot of moms do that. Instead of introducing purees, so they'll give their away. baby solids and they'll either mash them up, let them eat it with their hands, or use one of these. We're kind of doing both. And I love this because it kind of lets Lincoln be in control. He's able to hold this and eat it. And it's a, it's a Fun activity, yeah. right? And so this one's the newbie one. Yeah. And then this one's the the, one. the main difference is that this is mesh and this is plastic. So basically, I like the texture of this going in his mouth. He seems to enjoy this one a little more. It, it does get nasty. a lot messier. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not good. So this not one's easy to clean. Easier this to is clean. so easy to clean, and, and he enjoys this one as well. So it's really just these were our two favorites. So we gave you guys a lot of information today. It's a lot to swallow and we didn't cover like half the things, different guidelines, different gear. There's so much information out there. One of my favorite resources is a site called momtastic.com and they have an amazing section on that site called Wholesome Baby Food, which is every bit of information you could ever want. So make sure you check it out. The link is gonna be below. In the meantime, I hope that some of these tips are gonna help you guys maybe make you willing to make your own baby food. and. Um, Thanks for watching, guys, and thanks to my fly girl, Brooke, for helping me out today. Can you do it again? Clap, clap, clap!